Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Mindless Horror Podcast, 80th episode. Oh, we're filming the 80th episode already. Wow, it feels like... 80th episode. Feels like we were just at... I don't know, like 50. 50? Yeah. Just 50, huh? That's the number. Lucky number 50. Today on the podcast, we're going to be talking about some Evil Dead, uh, some Ozzy Osbourne, some Marvel, and a um, potential Knives Out sequel. So, wow. Yeah, here we go. Um, Roll the intro. Roll the intro. <laughs> New intro music, by the way, by yeah. our friends The Promised Land. Yeah, shout out to the Promise Line for letting us use uh, the, the new the, music. The new track, Rabbit Hole. It's uh, kind of like that uh, little ooh kind of music. So Yeah, I haven't heard it yet, so it'll be my first time hearing it. By the way, nice hat. Oh, I know. Are you wearing the same hat? We're the same twinsies. Hat, Knights of War hat. Yeah. If you guys want to check out how to win one of those hats, there's a video that we have on our channel right now. So, yeah, go check that yeah, out. Yes, Knights of War follow through. Yeah, there it is right there. Um, Evil Dead. Evil Dead. Sam Raimi is addressing the future of Evil Dead, <coughs> uh, the Evil Dead film franchise, during a Reddit chat. What do you? What did he have to say? So Sam Raimi came out on Reddit and said, of course, uh, as for him, he would love to direct a new Evil Dead movie, okay. but he'd really love to have Bruce in it, even though Bruce said he retired the character. Raimi says he hopes not. Yeah. And then he, uh, someone continued the question uh, with... Uh, B.D. Alvarez, who directed the remake of uh, Evil Dead, okay. and they asked him, uh, is that still on the table, too, for a sequel for that universe kind of Evil Dead? And, yeah. Uh, he goes, if, if Feedy would be down to uh, write and direct or direct it, uh, then yes, uh, in a split second, he would jump on that project. So Sam Raimi would join Feedy on a new one? Yeah, if he agreed to direct or write right. it. Okay. So. If Sam you, will only do the... Whatever other one he doesn't do, correct? It's Sam Raimi would probably produce it. it, and then he'll find someone either to, to write direct it or write it. Yeah. So. Okay. That okay. Is um, I, I hope they do more Evil Dead. We probably won't get more Ash because he retired the character in yeah. Ash vs Evil Dead. Um, that was his last adaptation of the character Ash. Yeah. By Bruce Campbell, um, such an iconic horror character, but we'll see. If you're on an Evil Dead binge, though, good news. January tenth. Evil Dead, the original one, is going to be on Netflix, January 10th, 2020. Okay, so that'll be... This well, Friday. This Friday, wow. And if you guys want even more Evil Dead, Ash vs. Evil Dead is currently streaming on Netflix right now. Oh, wow, so, so there is enough Evil Dead to go around we currently just Evil on Dead Netflix. 2 and Army of Darkness, and we're good to go. Yeah. But the original Evil Dead will be streaming on Netflix January 10th, 2020, so it's going to be good. As of this <sighs> recording, that's four days from now. Yes, I was just recording. But when this boot video comes out, that'll be two days from now. Okay. So that's good. Nice. So I'm looking forward to that. I love the original Evil Dead. You know, I've never seen it. Oh, we can sit down and watch it. Yeah. Of course, when we do our new monthly live streams where we sit down and watch Netflix horror movies. Yeah, so send your suggestions on over and we'll be happy to consider them. Definitely. Because uh, there's a lot of horror movies that I was looking through the horror section mm -hmm. I have not seen. <laughs> I mean, if you it. haven't seen it, I probably haven't seen it. I mean, you just said you haven't seen Evil Dead, so that shows you how much you are. Yes, we all know that. That shows you how much you are. Uh, how far behind. How far behind you are. Rain Johnson. Oh, Knives Out. Uh, you know, the guy who ruined Star Wars. Uh, yeah. He, he, made a, he, made a, he made a bad movie. Rain Johnson reveals that he is working on a sequel to the hit, uh, his hit murder mystery, Knives Out. Did you see the original? Or did you see the, the one that came out? No, I have not. I heard it's good, though. I heard it was good, too. I haven't seen it, though. I better go try to check that out. It made $250 million worldwide and $40 million well, on a $40 million production budget. That's not bad. Um, and the, um, the director told Hollywood Reporter that 
Um, he is currently uh, working on a sequel that is going to be centered around Daniel Craig's southern detective, Be uh, Benoit Blanc, huh. investigating a new case. So yeah, it's going to be a new case. That yeah. was uh, that was pre Golden Globes. That was for the pre Golden Lion Gate Lion Gate's pre Golden Globes party. Oh, well, nice. Um, so that's that's really cool. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, I heard the I heard this one was good. Yeah, and it has, I heard it has, it has a lot of twists and turns. Well, it had an all-star cast too. I mean, obviously, I mean any cast that has uh, what is uh, what's Jamie Paul? Lee Curtis, Jamie Lee Curtis, uh, uh, Chris Evans. Evans. Then the, I mean, I can't name a lot of the actors at the top of my head, but like yeah. I've seen them in movies. Yeah, they have a pretty good cast. It's a pretty good cast. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I don't know. I got I got to see uh, Knives Out first, and then if I if I think it's sequel worthy, then we'll, we'll find out. We'll find out. Um, speaking of actually, this is something I'm gonna add. Golden Globes, though, man. Uh, two things that took home some good Golden Globes this past weekend. Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which yeah, you're a huge fan of. I'm a huge fan of, and the horror aspect of that, of course, is Charles Manson, which he's not yeah. really much interested in the movie a long time, but his, he's in the movie his, for a split second. But, but his, his followers, are, yeah, the follower, the family is in there um, for a cool minute. So that took home three Golden Globes. Yes, uh, best uh, motion picture of a musical a comedy. Best screenplay and best supporting actor with Brad Pitt. Yeah. So congratulations on that. That's one of my. That was my probably one of my favorite movies in 2019. Uh, and Joker took home two uh, Golden Globes as well. Yes. They took home the best original score and uh, best actor in a movie. Walking. Yeah. For a motion picture drama. So. Yeah. That is a uh, awesome. Just wanted to throw that out there. A little bit extra news. Because yeah, I guess Joker's got some horror aspects to it. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. It's, it's realistic. Yeah, it's realistic, huh? It's realistic. It could happen. People could die. Well, he kills people. <laughs> okay. That's all. That's people all. Tell you to be realistic. Um, a psychopath starting a riot. He said people can die. That's hilarious. Um, is it true? It is true. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking. I was thinking more on the line of the horror aspect of people actually being like a Joker. Well, yeah. Like that's it's, also it's, true. Like, it's pretty much bipolar disease. If you really think about it. Like, well, I mean, he has something. a lot of he has a lot of disorders. Yeah. That's true. Um, did you watch the new trailer for the new Dark for the new Mutants movie that came out coming out in April? The, the, so the movie that the through. movie that has literally been continuing Four to years get postponed three years in the making. I think continually postponed every single time. Three years in the so making. Disney's gonna let it come out. Disney, I, okay. So and that's the funny thing about the trailer. Twentieth <laughs> Century Fox. It's still Twentieth Century Fox Marvel. Yes, but it's Disney owns 20th Century Fox now. So they let me, have let me read you what Bloody Disgusting wrote uh, in their um, article. You'd think the genre output would have uh, flatlined once Disney acquired 20th Century Fox, and yet here we are with another uh, <sighs> cusp of another horror tingled, uh, uh, a whole no, an, another horror tinged uh, released. Last summer, oh, the light huh? turned on, nice. Um, let's let see. there be light, it said. Yeah, they knew we were filming. There's more light. Um, if you guys don't know the story of uh, New Mutants by now, um, it was supposed to come out in April of 20, I think, 17? No, 2018. 2018, yeah. And then it got postponed a year because... <laughs> they had a reshoot, right? They reshot the entire movie. Yeah. Because when they did it to test audiences, it wasn't scary enough to where they wanted it to be. Yeah. So they reshot the entire movie and it got slated for an April 2019 release. No, a February 2019 release. They didn't move back to April, probably. But then what had happened was Dark Phoenix came out around that time, and they didn't want that intertwined, so they moved it to they moved it to August of 2019. And then they, Disney acquired. There's rumors that Disney was going to be acquiring Fox, in which I think it's come September they did. Yeah. And um, just continually got pushed back. Yeah. So at that point, everybody thought, okay, this movie's done. Yeah. However. What kept me thinking that this movie wasn't going to be done was the fact that every time I'd go to the movies or something, I'd see a New Mutants poster. Wait, so I, didn't, I haven't seen the poster. I would see a poster. Every time I went to the AMC, I would see a poster that is still displayed saying that it's going to come out. It just didn't have a release Dang. date. Yeah. Um. So that was... I mean, I, Disney's smart. They already paid for the entire movie. It was probably Fox that paid for the Well, I mean, that's why, but they, they, they've already paid for the movie. Yeah, I mean... It's already been reshot. It's coming out in theaters, too. It's going to be post-production. I mean, they probably have to put a little bit more money in post. Uh, they just have to put a little bit of money in marketing. It looks pretty good, though. 
I you know it from the trailers that I have seen. I didn't know they put out a new one. They put out a new one today. Yeah. It did look pretty scary. The new one that they put out today. So they play like a sadistic version of uh, another brick in the wall. Mm-hmm. Um, and you see, you're introduced more to the characters this time around. Right? Okay. So you get to see them, you know, kind of be them, and you see that they're locked in this, like, kind of asylum. Yeah. If you would say, but it's a, a place where they're trying to like experiment and you know see who these kids are with their powers uh, is it going to be linked to the like fx show at all because there was like that fx show yeah so yeah they did the fx show legion which was yeah. supposed to be about um a professor x's son who yeah. is legion he was, he was I, I think it's changed in the comics recently but he at one point was the most powerful mutant oh, wow. of all time um but i think lately someone else stepped up and is took over yeah someone else is more powerful than him but in this trailer you're seeing the kids uh, in the asylum, and what had happened was you're seeing them kind of like use their powers and stuff. And what it what it looks like is for the psychological part of this movie is they are gonna make the um, kids kind of live out these nightmares till it pretty much kills them. Yeah. Because it looks like they're trying to get rid of the mutants at that point. Uh. Um, what I find interesting about this movie is they're mixing horror themed kind of genre with like a comic book huh because you're getting like the x-men yeah which you know i could see how they can make it really scary which would be the fact that these kids have these powers and they're trying to learn how to control them trying to use you learn them at the same time you're throwing in a horror element into it so it should be pretty interesting no i mean it, it looks it look, definitely looks scary and yeah if, if they put them in scenarios where they're not well, I guess they all each have, like, their powers are supposed to be, like, dark-type powers, too. Yeah. So that's what's going to fuel, probably, a lot of the nightmarish kind of yeah. scenes. But I'm looking forward to it. I, I, I was behind this movie, like, far before it was even going to get released, and even when they announced it and everything, and I am very much looking forward to what they have to offer. My biggest fear is that because it's had so much time, that... Like, it's going to be overworked. Yeah. And then it's not going to end up with a good result. I will see. Um, we'll see, though. I mean, I would like to be pleasantly surprised. I would love to see what the original cut would be like, um, too. Yeah. Um, just because, you know, that, that cut of the movie could have been good as well. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, the next bit of news, uh, which the new video came out today, as you know... You know, at least. I'm a big Ozzy Osbourne fan. Yeah. Um, he released... Uh, so he released two new songs. Uh, it's one of them's Under the Graveyard, which came out... Um, oh, wow. It came out like two months ago, right? Yeah, it came out around actually like in the haunt season. Yeah. Because I remember using it in a compilation. Yeah. Um, and then he came out with another song like in December called Straight to Hell. Yeah. Um, so they released the music video for Under the Graveyard, which pretty... It's pretty kind of... Uh, I wouldn't say like sad, but like it's fucked up to see what he went through. Yeah. Um, Straight to Hell just came out this morning. Um, it's Ozzy Osbourne's uh, latest single from his new uh, up and coming album, and the music video got released this morning. It was really, it's a really good music video. Huh. Um, he's the Prince of Darkness. You got to mention him when you think of horror, dude. Like that guy. I don't think of horror. I think it's just like, like doing dark stuff. I don't really. I when I think of like when I think of just the horror genre, I think of metal in general. But when I think of metal, you there's only there's there's one group that comes to mind that like start started the genre, which is Black Sabbath. Well, yeah. And then you know when you think of Black Sabbath, nine out of ten times you're gonna think of Ozzy. Dio. I'm just kidding. Oh, you can think of Dio. I mean, yeah, Dio did a, it did his time. And I'm Ozzy. just giving Dio a hard time. No, okay. Yeah, Dio did. I don't know. I'm, not, I'm fine with Dio. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't know. I love Ozzy, and I, when I like I said, when I sometimes think of horror, sometimes he's the one that comes to mind. He's got some Bark at the Moon, you know, Crazy Train. Mm -hmm. You naming songs? Talking about crazy. Oh, I'm just naming songs that like you know, kind of the horror aspect. Straight to Hell, Under the Graveyard. Even though like what I thought Under the Graveyard talked about was one thing, it actually talks about a whole different thing. So. After watching the music video, so it makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what I mean, it doesn't. Have, they don't have to coexist. No, they don't. He can have one meaning, but then another record label could have another meaning. Yeah, that's true. Um. All right. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about the grudge. Oh fuck! 
So this Grudge movie came out. Me and you saw it back in August. Yeah, we saw it. It may have gotten better. I doubt it. I don't know. I don't want to go see it, though. I'm not going to see it. I already... I can tell you this. My one of my friends saw it, and he was completely disappointed. I bet. I told him because we I were told we were that. disappointed when we saw it. It it literally for a movie that is supposed to be filled with tension and jump scares. Have it didn't even. So scare have you me. seen the original ones or no? Yeah, I've seen I've seen parts of the original. So okay, now okay, now let me rephrase that. You've seen the Sarah Michelle Gellar one. Yeah, I've seen the Sarah Michelle which Gellar was the reboot. Yeah. Have you seen the original Jun Un, which was in Japan? I watched parts of it because I was also. Um, what's the fucking Ring's name? What's her name? Uh, I saw oh, oh Ringo. Yeah, but I saw like Ringu. I think that's the the Japanese one. Yeah, yeah. And so I saw, I started watching other films. Now, are like you it. are you aware that they made a Grudge no, versus just... Ring movie? No, I've never seen it. That's I... something we might have to watch. Yeah, we might have to watch it. I know that they did it, and I want to watch it, and I'm rooting for the Ring. Are you but really? I... Yeah. Uh, I already know who wins. Such as Grudge probably wins. Well, I mean, it's a two against one. Yeah, you know it's a mean? two it's on one. It's a mom. You, so I didn't know that. I was watching Mike's video. That's she's a she's a mom, and that's her son. Oh really? I thought they were brother and sister. They look yeah, because she looks young. Yeah. I may be having falsified. You looked over there, and we were talking about the Grudge, and that's why I was like, "What the fuck are you looking at?" <laughs> no. Um, but I, I, I didn't know that. Uh, you I, know what it was? I, I, I heard I may, something it, over here, that's why. I uh, they're talking in your front room, yeah, that's it, why. I, I mean, it may be, it may be wrong, I don't know, but yeah. now we're hearing creaks and shit. Yeah. Talking about the grudge. And but I just started talking about grudge, dark stuff, you hear your stuff, cousins, like, cousin, laughing yeah. there. Uh, your footsteps over here. No, but I, I just, I don't know, I mean, we saw the grudge. And I was disappointed. All I wasn't even scared. All it was was an Ameri- They pretty much Americanized the curse. They literally took the curse that was in Japan, and they brought it to America, and they just put the curse on a new family. Yeah, and and based upon like it was super confusing because of all of the time lapsing things. And I nearly did that in the original Ring movie. I mean, not the, the original Grudge. grudge. I, mean, yeah. I don't know why I said the Ring. The original Grudge. And I know that they had like time lapses that were kind of mixing up and stuff. Yeah. And, like, you could see where it was going in the beginning, but it was just kind of like, this is so unnecessary. Well, it's like in the beginning, you know, I mean... It at the very beginning, it's yeah. like, okay, we're in Japan, and then now we're going to the U.S. Yeah, it's just like... And then all the time lapses in the U.S. are kind of just like... It's just different timelines. Yeah, the curse just bouncing everywhere, so... Yeah. It was weird, but I guess this weekend it only it made $11.3 million in the box office. Which is pretty bad. I don't know what the budget was. I'm yeah. assuming the budget was very low for this movie. I'm assuming it was a low budget because like the the biggest actor they were talking about is like John Chu. I think that's John his Chow, or Chow. Yeah. Yeah. And like he's he's only in the movie for like five minutes. Yeah. And he. Which I was super disappointed with because he's a really good actor. He's a very good actor. And, and then the other girl, the old lady, what's her name? Oh, from Insidious. Yeah, she's yeah. the other biggest actor. But, yeah. Um. What I was more disappointed about was the fact that Sam Raimi produced this. Same. Because, I mean... How do we you had go, just saw Crawl. How do you go from Crawl to, like, the grudge? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's like Crawl was freaking... It kept you on your toes the entire time. That movie was literally perfect. It was, like, so frustrating at points where you were just in a theater like, this is yeah. just getting frustrating. Everything... And then going back to the grudge here, everything that they showed in the trailer... Is in... Like, was the best parts of the movie. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you could have spent an hour, like a minute thirty watching that. And then the, the trailer. fucking ending of the movie is just horrible. I'm just like, stupid. Oh my god, dude! It's so, like this is over. Okay, cool. Thank God. Oh wait, no, it's not. We're gonna set it up for a fucking potential sequel. It's not gonna get a sequel with that. No, it won't. With that pull rate, unless it goes a straight to DVD kind of release. But yeah, even then, um, but I don't think Sam Raimi will put his name on the next one. No, he won't. He shouldn't. <laughs> Sam Raimi, you're better than this. Do you? How do you go from directing Evil Dead to directing the fucking Spider Man trilogy to? <laughs> doing crawl and then you did something like this yeah like come on we were disappointed very disappointed Sam Ramey but I still love you come on the podcast uh, the last thing we're going to talk about uh, 25 new horror games that are going to be coming out in 2020 okay um, first one is Carry On don't know anything about I don't know it. anything about this but it's a video game version of The Blob so the movie The Blob, Blob yeah uh, it's a video game version of that uh, I'm going to have to watch the trailer of that later then uh, they are re-releasing Resident Evil 3 okay. Remastered, which is probably going to be on the Resident Evil 7 engine, yeah. where if you guys aren't aware of what that was, it's a very it's a very clean engine they did. Yeah. Um, so they did Resident Evil on They that. did Resident Evil 2 on that. Resident Evil 3 is on it right now. 
Uh, or it's gonna be on it. And what are you doing? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't want to get in the video. Your brother's asleep. I wanted to go see Snowball. I'm my brother. I know he's asleep in there. <laughs> anyway, uh, Last of Us Two. Yes, May I'm so excited. May 29th release. Damn, but I'm not gonna have a PS4 by then. But uh, I know you can come over my house. We can play it. Okay. Huh. I won't play without you. So we got that going. <coughs> so Last of Us Two. I'm super excited for. It. That's gonna be fun. <laughs> Zombie Ar Army Four: Dead War. Didn't even know there was three before it. Yeah, I do. I know Zombie Army. It's a, uh, it's it's an okay game. So I didn't know they were making a fourth one though. So that's pretty cool. Man Eater. Um, Karen is the only game to make a toothy chomper in the humanity of 2020. Man Eater should finally be swimming onto various game platforms this year. Never heard of Best it. described as Saints Row, but you're a shark man eater. Will let you play the role as a surprisingly spry tear from the deep. Out of out to tear every living thing to the bloody pieces. That sounds fun. That sounds like a game I would buy if it was like 10 bucks. That sounds like a game i just download for free. Oh yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even know why you would go and buy that. Dying Light 2. Spring 2020. Um, did you play the first Dying Light? No, I've no no nothing about this. So game. Dying Light is basically think of um, parkour and a zombie apocalypse. Parkour and a zombie apocalypse. Yeah, you do a ton of parkour in this game, and it was a zombie apocalypse. So which huh. which made it really fun. You get a machete. You can get a you can get a lot of various weapons. Okay. You can get guns, machetes, swords. Um, remothered, broken, proclaimed. Porcelain. 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 There you yeah, go. Yeah, that's how you read that. I don't know how to read. I've never heard of that game. Broken porcelain could hit well hit the sweet spot of uh, refining the good parts and fixing some of the. Oh, I guess it's a. It's an extension of a game called Remothered. Probably. I don't uh, know. I've never heard of it. Never heard of it either. Uh, I don't know. Dark Pictures Anthology Little Hope. Never heard of that either. Let's see. Submerse, uh, super Massive second entry in the anthology horror film. Mm. Horror series of games makes good on the variety promised by such a concept. We'll be swapping out. Uh, what else do they make? Do they make. Is this the same company that did. Um, what was that game that you. that focused on the butterfly effect? I don't know. It was a PS4 game. It was exclusive, too. I forget the game. But it was uh, Death. No. I forget the game. It had an all star cast in it, though. It was pretty good. Um, Vampires the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. Mm -hmm. No, no, nothing Didn't about that. Didn't even know they made a first one. Oh, the first one came out in 2004, so people who have oh. been fans of this game oh, will be happy Will be happy that this game, they've been waiting fucking 10, years, 11, 15, 16. 16 years Where for this game to come out. I didn't even know what year it was. System Shock. Happy uh, 2020, everyone, by the way. Happy 2020. This is the like, first podcast of the new year. Yeah. And we're on our way to, uh, we're on our way to 100, hopefully, this year. Damn, it's going to be crazy. I know. Uh, let's see. System Shock. It has been a while. Uh, it will be a while it's been <coughs> before we see from the Bioshock, from Bioshock. So in the meantime, it'll be nice to uh, to return to its uh, spiritual forebear in its new and hopefully not as dark 2020 form. Yes, System Shock uh, Troubled Remake is on the horizon and is showdown with Shodan, arguably one of the uh, gaming's most sinister villains. No, nothing. In 2017, Prey left you uh, craving more. Immersive sci-fi horror sim a goodness, then this looks like it may be a safe bet. Okay. Rainbow Six Quarantine. Oh, they're bringing that back, huh? So they did Rainbow Six Siege, which was like yeah. quarantine mode. And they did a test of it. And I guess it did really good. Although you were only getting play you can only play it on 30 frames per second. And yeah. it was very shitty. Yeah. But I guess they're bringing it back then. Huh. Predator Hunting Grounds. Now, this one I'm excited for. Oh, you know. You're going to get to play as either the Predators or the people hunting Predators. Huh. And it's going to be a full-on, like, open-world game. So wow. That should be pretty cool. Uh, Wasteland 3. Fallout may be going in a different direction these days, but there are plenty of games about willing to fill the void. The resurgence of the CRPG Obsidian's The Outer Worlds and more give back different aspects of Fallout throughout the ages. And Wasteland 3 is very much a part of that. Uh, in Exil's second sequel to the post-apocalyptic tactical RPG series is inarguably the best-looking entry so far. If it, if it can also refine the mechanics, this could, prove, this could prove to be the critical breakout Wasteland 2 threatened to be. No, nothing about that. Little Nightmares 2, coming out in 2020. I don't know what that is, but it's a no. PC and consoles. 
World of Horror. No it's idea. It's kind of... Yeah. Sons of the Forest. Nothing. Succubus, which if you know about the lore of the Succubus, it's kind of weird. But, yeah. Succubi, there's more than one of them. Scorn. Uh, Ghostwire Tokyo. Now, this one looks good. Ghostwire Tokyo, I remember seeing that at E3. Um, this, uh... Yeah, this is the, the same people who made the game The Evil Within. Okay. Um, which was uh, arguably one of my favorite horror games. I remember watching you play that one. I didn't play it, but the I first one. It. I've never beat. I haven't beat the second one. I gotta yeah. beat the second one. There's a lot of games you have not beat. Like. I know, but that one I had to because I have to because uh, Ghost uh, Wire Tokyo will be an action adventure title that sees you fighting paranormal entities or uh, paranormal em enemies. I'm sorry, and dealing with the uh, evil supernatural presence that has engulfed <laughs> the city of Tokyo. <coughs> Spirits and demons of the east. Yep. Not much else is known about the Bastida produced title, but Let's after see. the wild ride of the Evil Within Two, we're keen to see the what Tango Game Works can do next. So I gotta, I gotta beat Evil Within Two. Then it looks like I know you're gonna be very excited about this next one. Doom Eternal. Dude. I... Wait, you not like Doom? I've never played Doom. How have you never played Doom? Easy. Dude, you never owned the game. You need to buy. You need to get never... it on the Xbox One. It's amazing. The Doom remastered one that they or the Doom the Doom game that they did the last one, this one's gonna be fun though because this one's gonna have the actual first ever Doom multiplayer. Oh wow! So you can either play as the guy trying to kill all the monsters or you can play as the monsters, monsters trying, trying to, to kill, kill the, the guy. guy. So that's gonna be fun. Yeah. Baldur's Gate three. I have never heard of that. Nope. Paranoid. Okay, Black Sabbath. Okay, Black Sabbath. <laughs> the Dark Crystal Age of Resistance <laughs> Tactics. No idea. Nio 2, Team Ninja's doing that. I don't know who they are. Disaster no. Report 4, Summer Memories. No idea. That looks horrible. Half-Life, uh, Alex. Uh, they're still making Half-Life games, huh? I don't know. Bayonetta and Vanquish, 10th Anniversary. So it looks like it's going to be a remaster. That's it, yeah. Werewolf the Apocalypse, Earthblood. No idea. Well, oh, it's a werewolf game, so you got my attention. And that is it for the top, uh, for the 20 new games that are, horror games that are coming out in 2020. Wow. Um... So that is going to do it today for the Milosaur Podcast, episode 80. Episode 80. 80 episodes, man. I can't believe we've done 80 episodes. Yes. And it's only going to keep going. From... This is the longest running series on the channel. Yeah, this has been there since the beginning. It's been, eh. I don't know. I don't know when you guys began. It was about, about January. When you guys started the two-year anniversary is coming up. Yeah. And I think we're going to have... Uh, we got some special guests. We got some special guests that we've announced. Rick West will be joining us on Sunday, uh, January twenty sixth. <laughs> so that'll go out probably the next week. Yeah. So sometime that week, as well as Ted Doherty, will be on the show, January twenty fifth, Saturday. Also, oh, uh, we have them back to back, back to back. Yeah. So oh wow. It's gonna be a good one. Um, and those will both be out the same week. Or I don't know how. I don't know how. Well, we'll you'll just, find out. You'll find out. But for now. Thank you for guys. Thank you for guys. Thank you, Thank you guys so much for watching the Milo Sword Podcast. All uh, if you guys been here since the beginning, all, all eighty episodes. Thank you so much. Thanks. We've only got twenty more. We're on so, the count. We're on the count to hundred now. Hundred. So um, thank you guys mm -hmm. for the constant support. We hope you guys enjoy the channel. We got a lot of great stuff coming this year. Yes. Um, twenty twenty is gonna be perfect vision. We got a lot of collaborations in the works. We got a lot of. Uh, new series coming out. We got a lot of live streams we want to do. We got a lot of coverage that are going to hopefully get covered this year. And then we're going to be at Midsummer Scream. Midsummer Scream 2020. <laughs> and then the next thing you know, it'll be 2021. Hopefully, Monster. It Rosa all goes quick. It all goes quick. On X. Oh my God. We're going to die. Going to die. Going to we'll die. We do it for you. My government. All right, but uh, if you're uh, if you're still with us, uh, you haven't turned us off yet because you have decided that we're not that boring. Yep. Uh, you can find us on the uh, social media, uh, Instagram at the Knights of War, and Twitter at Knights of War. I always have to check with Tony if you guys know already because I don't know I always anything. Know. That's why I give him a thumbs up. Yes. Uh, if you're feeling a little extra generous, you can catch us on Patreon. We have a few different tiers, uh, ranging from a one dollar all the way up to twenty dollars. Uh, uh, not expected. Uh, but if you do want to find an extra way to contribute, um, we're always going to use those funds to come back to you all. Um, you know, because pimping ain't cheap. 
Compton ain't cheap. Um, but I'm um, just kidding. Uh, respect women. Respect your parents. But always subscribe. Yes. Oh, uh, yes, yes. So if you do, if you can't, if you haven't subscribed, do do that. Oh man, English is hard. Um, or turn those bell notifications on. I think that covers it all, right? Did I go all the way? There's a new policy on YouTube now about the freaking uh, kid thing. Oh it? yes, yes. All of our content is uh, for 13 and greater. Yeah. So we're not. Even... We're not out here for the little kids. No. That's for others. But if kids watch, videos. if kids watch this, then you know, make sure your parents know you're watching yeah. us. Yes. Because we don't, uh, don't want to set a bad example. Yes. Even though we probably do. We are a bad example. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching Miles Holder Podcast episode 80, and we will see you guys next week for another one. Peace.